Vicky. I'm glad you're here. Today I have a project for a really easy wreath. It's going to be hand painted. It's going to be a card and I'm going to make a custom envelope with the envelope punch board and it's going to be a square shaped card. So that's something a little bit different than what I usually do. I'm using my Canson XL watercolour paper. That's it right there. Very inexpensive. You get 30 sheets. It lasts for a very long time. So the other things you're going to need is some VersaFine Onyx Black ink and either a stamp positioner or an acrylic block and a couple of water brushes. I have a fine tip and a medium tip, a gold pen. This is a pen touch 2.0 millimeters. You could use a gold jelly roll pen or a gold Sharpie. This is the one I really like. This is from Sakura. And I'm going to be making the wreath shape with that. I have some colours here of Zig markers. So these come from my 30 colour set A that I'm really getting a lot of enjoyment from at the moment. I store mine with the lids facing down. I put them all in this direction so when I reach in I can see the colours. Otherwise, if you store them the other way, all you see is these lids. So. I haven't had any trouble with them bleeding or leaking, so I'm going to keep them like that for now and they just sit upright on my desk. Deep Vermilion, Shadow Pink and Smoky Yellow. And I have a green here. I'm not sure if I'm going to use that. I haven't decided whether there will be leaves or whether this is just going to be flowers only. I'll wait and see what the composition is and what I decide. I have a scrap strip to test out my colours and my gold marker on. You need to pump this usually to get it started so I want to do that on a scrap not on my actual card. And this is going to be a six inch by six inch square card. So this is a nine by twelve sheet of paper. So this will be the halfway mark. We're going to need to cut off this at the six inch mark. So I'll do that right now. So you're going to put your paper in at portrait and trim at six inches. Now I'm going to remove the scoring blade or push it down the other end. And I'm going to score my card at six inches. Now, if you don't have a scoring tool like this, I do have a video coming up shortly on my channel, which is about how to score really thick cardstock. This is very thick. This is 300 grams, which is a really nice thick card, which is why I like it. It's fairly smooth. I, I enjoy that for card making, having a smooth card. And there's my six inch square. So it's a big one. But because I have my envelope punch board, I'll be showing you how to make the six inch envelope that goes with that from a sheet of scrapbook paper. Now, the first thing I want to do is to get my greeting stamped. So I have my stamps here and I'm going to tape down my card. You could use washi tape for this. I'm going to use my favourite QZ tape or QZ tape, which I purchased from my local dollar shop. And just pop a little bit of tape on there to keep the card closed while I put it on the stamp positioner and get the sentiment stamped. This would also make a beautiful painting. You could make it in a larger size and you could hang it on your wall. Put it in a frame and hang it up. It would look gorgeous. Now I have ordered the new Sizzix stamp positioner and stencils tool. It is absolutely gorgeous and it's on its way to me now. I have ordered it today. So that'll take a few weeks to get here, but I'll be doing an unboxing and a review of that and give you some ideas of how you can use it with your crafting and also with your watercolour painting. VersaFine, this is a pigment ink for fine details. It is my go-to ink. It's waterproof. I use it for so many applications. If I could only have one ink pad, it would be this one. 
Now we are stamping on watercolor paper, but this is easy for stamping on. It's got a pretty smooth surface. And that is perfect. So that's our stamping done. Now I'm going to bring in my watercolouring tools. And you can buy these individually, so you don't need to buy a whole packet of them. And you know, it, it would be nice to have every colour out there, but you really don't need every colour out there. I just choose the colours I like. And in this case, with these 30 set, these are the new set that's come out from Zig that they've added in just recently and they're lovely smoky colors they're not those really vibrant primary colors they make for a much more sophisticated painting i guess so it's just like doing a watercolor painting only without the mess these are going to be your best friends if you only have one size water brush that's okay i happen to have several different sizes of these i have a fine point one which is great for the center of my flowers and this is good for doing the petals. This is dry so I'm going to add some of this masking tape in random spots across my card and it's going to look quite strange. Um, it doesn't really matter where you do this. I just have an idea of where I want my flowers to sit and I want some of the flowers to be under the wreath and some of them to be over the wreath and I'm just going to pick a couple of random places here and there, where I can fit a flower in around my wreath. So I've got this little spot here. I want to bring this out a little bit so it's not quite so thick there. And that's just to keep the card together. And I want to be able to pick it up and move it around. So there we go. So three random spots around here and the reason for this is I want to have some flowers going underneath the gold and some sitting on top of the gold. Now I want to charge this up and get it started. So you press down on the barrel and the ink comes out. So you can see why you wouldn't want to do that on your card. Now, I've, now I can use it, now I can use it as a pen now that I've got the ink moving. So I'm just going to move this where it's a bit easier for me to reach and I'm going to draw a rough four or five lines of a kind of overly shaped, overly shaped? Well, I was going to say an oval. It's not quite a circle. It's going to be more upright than a circle because I want to be able to fit flowers around it. So it's going to be kind of a long um, oval this way. So here we go. That's it, there's your wreath done. Looks a bit weird and wobbly, but that's perfectly fine. I'm going to take the tape off. And you'll see there are some gaps where we can put some florals. There's another one up here. And just be careful peeling this off because this ink takes a little while to dry. You don't want to smear it. So don't put your fingers on it yet. It's probably 90% dry, but not fully there. So the flowers are very, very easy. They are so easy, you won't believe it. Okay, and there's no mess with this project. It's a real clean, easy project to do. I'm just going to put the tiniest, tiniest piece of this on here to keep it closed just a tiny piece it's really small you can only see just a tiny bit of it there and if i get to a flower there i'll lift that up to use it now we're sitting nice and straight so that makes me happy okay all right but a color scheme we've got our gold done so i can actually rip that off we don't need that again and i can use this for testing my colors okay now making sure the ink is dry and you know, there's something that I've done here and I would recommend you do it a little differently. You can see the lines finished there. I would have actually should have finished that over the tape and then this would look really super duper cool. The same where I started it. It's just a small thing, but 
um, if I was doing it again, I would start and finish on a line somewhere uh, where I've put that tape so that you don't see this. I'm really being picky here, guys. It's really looking pretty. <laughs> okay, all right. So we're going to start making a flower and I'm going to be turning the card so that I've got the right angle for making petals. So I'm gonna move these away move this off to the side. I need to be able to rotate my card like this. So you want some space to be able to do that, to make these flowers. And this is the easiest possible way to make them. And I suggest that you practice on something first. So here's some of that paper that I cut off to make the card. And I'm just going to show you how easy it is to make one of these flowers. So you're going to start off with five dots. Now to make dots with this, if you try like this, you're going to get long shapes. If you try like this, you'll get nice fine dots. And the secret to making these flowers work, which is what I found from the last time I made one of these, is that you need to drop your dots a few times in. One, two, three, four, like that. So I'll drop my dots in. One, two, three, four, times so that's discharging ink from the nib and I want to get five dots in a little star shape if possible it doesn't have to be perfect one two three four five one two three four five it could be less for you if yours are less or more inky one two three four five one two three four five there's our little shape and here's where the magic happens I'm going to start with my water brush. I'm going to squeeze some water out onto my paper towel so that my bristles are damp and I'm going to start with some that one one of these that's easy for me to reach and I'm just going to pull that out and there's our first petal. How easy is that? That is really easy is it not? Next one coming in here and you're going to visualize this is a five pointed flower, a uh, five petaled flower. I was going to say five pointed star. You start with a five pointed star but you go in with the five petals. And you see how if you turn it around, it's easier for you to pull that out. And you don't really have to be overly neat. You know, if one's not mixing or meeting the other one, you just add to it. This one's a bit gappy, that one's a bit gappy. And as you go along, as you practice this, this one's too short, so I'm gonna make him longer. And the other thing I like to do is have some jaggedy edges on the outside and while it's still wet I like to bring in a wiggly line at the edges of the petals and because you're using these water brushes you can see what happens now you see how that gets pulled out you've got a line there but you've also darkened the outside area and it doesn't matter if they bleed in together like those two are doing that adds to the charm now the next thing I'm going to do while it's still wet, I'm going to clean off that color on my brush, squeeze the brush again, just make sure it's nice and damp and that pinks off the brush. And I'm going to bring in smoky yellow and I'm just going to drop that in the center like so. And then here's where the magic happens, guys. This will bleed out a little bit, but I am going to drop a dot from my brush, now I'm going to show you on my hand, I'm going to squeeze it and drop a dot. You see that's beading? There it goes. That's all I want. I want to squeeze it until it beads into a drop. And look at the magic of this. Can you see how that's bleeding out? And I'm not squeezing now, I'm just, I'm just coaxing it. So there's no squeezing going on, I'm just coaxing it. How pretty is that? There's true watercolour happening. Now I'll come back when these are dry and add in some centres because if I was to add another drop of the smoky yellow in here now, it would just keep bleeding out. I need to wait till this is dried. So that's your flower basically. And we're going to fill up all around here where we can with these flowers. So let's start dotting. Now, I don't think I'm going to use smoky pink because this is coming out really light. 
it's almost the same color anyway i have that there but i have a feeling i'm going to prefer my flowers quite dark so i may not even use this color it might just be two colors to make this flower wow <laughs> that's easy <laughs> so we'll get a flower started over the top down here and this is where i mean i'll have some flowers that are over the top and then the others will be underneath so let's get our five points done and this one's going to be reasonably sized but i want to lift it up a little bit away from the edge i want the center of it to be up here somewhere so that it's got room to move so one two three four five taps one two three four five one two three four five and i'm going to hold it a bit more upright i'm not getting enough out that's it one two three four five one two three four five add a bit more to these so you can see when i hold it upright it's actually helping the ink drop down into the br bristles anyway. So there's the start of our flower. Let's draw it out. Here we go. And each of these petals, I sort of want to almost touch that gold. See how we go. And I'm going to move around. Can bring this right up to here and you can make them as big as you want just by drawing out more of the pigment from the center and put a wiggle on the end i find a wiggle on the end looks more natural than if you try and do them round that is pretty and now to get this beautiful edge you can see how this has a hard edge on it the way you get this hard edge is to put your wiggle down, down here on each of the petals. Okay, and this is gonna give us that great hard edge because the pigment is going to walk towards wherever the water is. So it will stay within the boundaries of the wet spaces. And you don't wanna fiddle with this very much Occasionally you might need to fatten one of the petals like I just did there, but really less is more. The less you do, the more pretty this looks. Okay, now I'm going to drop that middle in. And again, I'm probably going to do the same amount. One, two, three, four, five, and maybe a little bit more, maybe eight. I'm doing quite a bit more. And then we're going to do this technique where you drop one bead. That was not one. <laughs> okay, let's try I pressed too hard. I'm going to drop one bead. There we go, onto the center. So I'm going to do that now, drop one bead. Bam. And here goes the magic. Just watch and see what happens here. Can you see that yellow wicking out? And you can coax it a little bit if you want to. You get these beautiful colors. Look at that. This is one of the cards I did using this method. And you can see how beautifully those colors walk into each other. It's just lovely. We're going to leave the center because that comes in last and I'm just going to fill in with more of these. We're going to do five. I want to bring it in up here further so that we don't lose a petal on the edge. We've only got this far to work with. So I'm going to bring it in a little further up here one, two, three, four, five. 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 One, two, three, four, five.
moment, it's probably because the tip is wet, it's picked up water. See how now I have much more pigment. I've dried it off a bit. So if it goes like this where it's watery looking, it's because there's water on it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. And about five dots in each. There we go. Who knew it was this easy, huh? <laughs> All right, now this one, I'm going to do something tricky. I'm going to come over the one that I've just created. So it's not separate. It's actually sitting under this petal here. So these two are touching. Tricky, right? Not really, not really. <laughs> it's easy, guys, I promise. And the trick is to keep turning it, otherwise you'll end up with petals all bunched to one side and it just doesn't look right. Now this is wet here, I can feel that's wet. So I'm just going to try and lift my hand a little bit. Because being a lefty, I tend to drag my hand through my work. It's always been the way. <laughs> you can see how I'm going right under this VersaFine Onyx Black ink here and it's not being bothered at all. It is beautiful waterproof ink. This one I want to make a bit fatter, so I'm bringing him this way. And this one here, he can even be fatter. This one can be a bit fatter. So you just fatten them up. <laughs> oh, I love this, I'm having such fun. <laughs> it's really easy, so, so good. And you can go over the gold. The gold is watertight now, so it's not going to bleed or anything like that. You're safe with the gold. draw this down so we're getting our edge this edge is just so fun oh man I love it and you can see how the edge really helps define where you've got something sitting under or over another one because it's got the edges it really helps to show that that is another petal from the same flower a bit gappy there so I'll close that off and here comes our yellow, our 10 dots of yellow. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I think it's about 12. And the big dot in the centre. Now remember we're going to come back with this when this is dry. All we really want now is for this to walk into the pink and give that beautiful sort of... It, it looks like... Ah, it's a bloom that's actually happening in there. And with the hard edges of the petals and then the bloom on the inside, wow, this is just fun. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Now, I'd like a little bit more yellow to walk into this petal. So I'm just going to add a bit more and coax it. I'm not going to add more water, I'm just going to coax it. There we go. Lovely. <laughs> So if you like this card, you can go back and have a look at these. I had um, six loose watercolor florals, I think it's called, and I have them in all different shapes and sizes, different colors. I did do some more pink, different color pink. I did some purples, I did some spidery um, daisies, and I did some blue. So you might like to have a look at that. That's a video that I have up. Now I just need to do the outside. You can see without this wiggly bit on the end, they would be very pale. You wouldn't really see them against the background, but because it has the line, the sharp line around it, it just works so good. So easy. 
So here we go in with our center. And one bop. Did that bop? Yes, it did bop. And then just push it into each one very quickly and it will continue to walk. Now we've got our wet one up here that's dried off quite a bit. So we'll see if this one will walk. I think it will. It needs a lot of water in there. There we go. And there's our next one. Look at those pretty, pretty flowers. And once they dry, once they get their centers in, this does make me happy. <laughs> All right. I've got a bit of a bleed happening on this one. Can you see here, it's it's bled right off to the edge and it, I don't mind the bleeds anywhere else, but this just doesn't look great for me. So I'm going to bring in my secret weapon. This is my magic eraser box. I have all kinds of erasers in here. Chuck's magic eraser. I'm going to get a glass of clean water put it in and squeeze it out till it's just damp, just squeeze it. And I've cut this down, you can see I've sliced it down because it's perfect for little small areas like this. And I'm going to bring the camera in so you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, see this little spot here, this one I'd like to lift. So I'm just dabbing, I'm not scrubbing, I'm just dabbing and it's damp. just want to make sure there's a white border there and I'm losing that and then you can grab a little bit of paper towel I've got some here so you need a little bit I'll take that little piece and just dry it and see the difference so that has solved that issue so I'm going to draw some circles for the centers and then I'm going to put little spiky bits on the edge really close in. Now if you have a look, can you see how I've done that center? So you start with a small circle and then you just put little spikes around the edge and for the smaller flowers you do a smaller center of course. <laughs> at this and I'm seeing a really nice composition however I'm seeing quite a lot of black this big black piece here that doesn't have any friends to play with <laughs> so I'm going to test out some of my black and I'm just going to put in some really small dots really tiny 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 around the edge and this will help the color combinations look at the difference that makes um, I wouldn't put splashes on this. I think splashes would be way too busy. I think you need something that's quite simple and it reads as just a very subtle element. That makes all the difference. It also plays into the background a bit well, or a bit well, that's not right, a bit better. <laughs> It's very hard to do a voiceover while you're actually creating art. For those of you who haven't tried it, it is tricky. I tend to get a bit tongue-tied. Have you probably noticed? Yeah, and I get giggly. So, but I'm, I'm giggly because I'm happy. And I think I just keep reading that you make me happy and it just makes me want to laugh. And why not? Making art is fun. Now I've got quite a big one there, so I'm gonna put a, a large one or larger in the middle of all of these. Groups of three look good, and then if you do three, and then you add a few more to that little triangle shape, it seems to work. Put a big one there, big one there. So I've got some small, I've got some large. I did not use the shadow pink. I've kept that here, it was too pale. I could see that it wasn't going to show up very well on this paper, but we didn't need it anyway, because we ended up with lots of different colors just using two markers. Now I want to make an envelope to go with my pretty card here. So I have brought out this Amy Tangerine 48 sheets 12 by 12 paper pad. This is by American Crafts 
and I'm going to choose I've used this one before which I really love I made a slip line envelope with that one but this time I'm going to have a look through and see what might look good in here these you can see the patterns on here already I'm liking the look of this one here because it has the same colors as the card so let's have a look here it is look at that so these come with a strip along the side that needs to be cut away and the size that I'm going to cut this to is on my envelope punch board gosh that's a good match okay so for a six by six card we are going to cut the paper size to 10 inches square so that tells you down here where your six by six card is there's your card size so we need to cut ah we need to cut sorry we need to cut to nine and a half inches square and score at the four and three quarter mark so nine and a half inches we'll do that right now and if you didn't have an envelope punch board you could just line this up and cut it to shape and fold it yourself but this just gives such a great result and if you're a card maker i recommend this is a great tool to have for one it saves you having to buy envelopes and it means you can customize everything you do so it looks really really cute so we're going to score it up here at four and three quarters you can see that there that's where we're going to line it up to so you are going to punch and you're going to score along this score line here so this is where we're scoring down to here and sometimes it's easier if you mark the edge so you know where you're heading to and then you score up in here and i'm going to do it right handed even though i'm a left hander just to show you on the film that it's easier to do it this way do it a couple of times just once you get into that groove you'll keep finding it each time so the first time you might wibble a bit wibble and wobble i've got a little line there that i wibbled in but it'll work so i like to start it off there so i know i'm heading in the right direction i think it's just be confident i'm doing it right-handed how good is this i'm a lefty fully lefty i'm not ambidextrous at all look at that who said it was hard it's real simple if i can do that yep and it's a straight line okay and same again punch i like to mark my end this is just a personal preference that i do i'll move it up a bit so you can see better what i'm doing okay and just be confident and then once you've done it once it will find the groove and it'll keep burnishing it for you nice that's good and then around again we line it up here on this little nib punch and score and round all four corners So if you don't have a corner punch, don't buy one. You have one if you buy the envelope punch board. And you can get different brands. This is from Stampin' Up, but we are memory keepers, make them. Um, other brands I've seen as well, so they're readily available. And they're just a handy thing to have if you're making cards, it's a good investment. All right, and there's usually a better way that they fold. So if you try it on all sides and you've gone off a little bit, so I'll show you what I mean. This, this way folding it looks weird. You see how none of that's lining up? But if you go this way, ah, now that looks like a professional envelope, doesn't it? So we're gonna go with that side. And for that, all you need is some tape runner. I have some Express It tape runner here. If you don't have a tape runner, you can use glue. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to run down the edge here on both sides edge to edge with your tape runner it's so easy to make these there we go a perfect envelope 
Now you can write on that as it is. If you wanted to post it, you could put a, a white piece of card over the top with the address on and, and space to put your stamps in this. But this is how it looks with my card. How gorgeous is that? In fact, I want to show off that's an envelope. So I'm going to put it like that so you can see. It is an envelope that matches. It's so pretty. So, so pretty. Thank you so much for joining me today. That was a lot of fun. I hope it's given you the confidence to try your hand at this easy watercolour technique with just a couple of markers, a water brush, some stamps and a nice gold pen. I would like to thank each and every one of you who has supported me and my channel and who has subscribed, who clicks the like button and all the rest of it leaves me comments. It means more than you know. See you again next time. Bye for now.